Good evening again. Today's presentation focuses on summarizing Chapter 6, Telecommunications and Networking Security from page 612 to 656 from Sean Harris' CSSP book. So topics I will be covering in this uh, summary are networking devices, PBX, firewall, proxy servers, and honeypot. Networking devices. There are different types of networking devices that exist. We will look at repeaters, bridges, switches, routers. First repeaters, they are network devices that work at the physical layer of the OSI model we covered in previous presentation. Repeater is used to receive a signal, regenerate it, and pass it on. It does not make intelligent decisions concerning forwarding packets. Example of hubs, they can actually be considered multi-part repeaters since a hub sends all traffic that is received to all other devices or hosts connected to it. Collisions are more likely to occur. Second, bridges. Uh, bridges work at data link layer of the EOSI model used to convert network data formats and perform basic data transmission management. They provide connections between local access networks. One of the functions is to make intelligent decisions about, about whether or not to pass signals onto the next segment of a network. Do not confuse routers with bridges. Routers work, work at the network layer of the ASI model and filter packets based on IP addresses, whereas bridges work at the data link layer and filter frames based on MAC addresses. Bridges do pass broadcast information, routers don't. So the idea behind a spanning tree protocol is bridges can discover a subset of the topology that is loop free. It also makes certain there is enough connectivity to reach every portion of the network. Next, switches. A switch is sometimes described as multiple bridge. It can have multiple ports to connect network segments while a bridge usually has only two ports that connect network segments. A switch is more sophisticated than a bridge. Um, switches learn information about the data packets that are received and use this information to build tables to determine the destination of data that is sent between computers on the network. In order to prevent traffic jams, a switch makes sure that data goes straight from its origin to its proper destination. Switches remember the address of every node on the network and anticipate where data needs to go. A router is needed in order to send data out of the internet or across a WAN since switches are not smart enough. Fourth, uh, routers. They are network devices that work at the network layer of the OSI model. They can regenerate signals and concentrate multiple connections convert data transmissions format and manage data transfers. They can also connect to a wide access network which allows them to connect LANs that are separated by distance. None of the other devices can provide this type of connection. Routers have also the responsibility of routing data packets from the source to the destination within the LAN and of providing a means of connectivity to the WAN. Next, layer 3 and 4 switches. Layer 3 switches use network or IP addresses that identify locations on the network. They read network addresses more closely than layer 2 switches. They identify network locations as well as the physical device. A location can be a LAN workstation, a location in a computer's memory, or even different packets of data traveling through, through the, the network. Switches operating at the layer 3 are smarter than layer 2 devices and incorporate routing functions to actively calculate the best way to send packet to its destination. But although they are smarter, they may not be as fast if their algorithms, fabric and processor don't support high speed. Layer 4 of the OSI model coordinates communications between systems. Layer 4 switches are capable of identifying which application protocols such as HTTP, SNTP, FTP and so forth are included with each packet and they use the inf this information to hand off the packet to the appropriate higher layer software. 
virtual local area networks or VLANs. A virtual local area network is the logical grouping of nodes on different physical LAN segments which can communicate with each other as if they were all on the same physical LAN segments. For example, in an office, the marketing department data may be on one of VLAN whereas IT department data results on another. VLANs can be spread across switches when the number of nodes in a network is large or spread over an area that cannot be reached by a single switch so multiple switches are used. VLANs limit the broadcast domain, improve security and performance and are ideal for separating industrial uh, automation systems from information technology systems. Next, gateways. One definition of a gateway is a software running on a system or other device that acts as a translator between two systems that do not use the same communication protocol, data formatting structures, languages, and architecture, and like the bridge. A gateway can provide filtering and security functions as in the case of proxy server or firewalls. Uh, most gateways operate at the application layer level. There are different type of gateways. Email gateways that convert messages between email servers, software, SMS gateways used to send and receive SMS messages. Voice and media gateways convert digital media streams between telecommunication networks. Uh, voice over IP media gateways perform the conversion between TDM voice to a media streaming protocol. The next topic is PBX, Private Branch Exchange. It refers to a telephone exchange that serves a particular business, makes connections among, among internal telephones and connects them to the PSTN via trunk lines. Some of the security concerns of PBX is that freakers or phone hackers take advantage of the system interface vulnerabilities, known factory passwords and uh, use social skills to obtain access to the system resources. Once a freaker has successfully hacked into a PBX system, he might exchange the information with other freaker, f freakers, implement callback schemes or place long distance calls that are billed to the company. Uh, there are some features in a PBX system that can be misused such as uh, call forwarding or call transfer settings and uh, voicemail transfer options. Next topic, firewalls. Firewalls are used to restrict access to one network from another. In other words, they prevent specific types of information from moving between the outside world and the inside world which is the trusted network. There are three main architectures, screened host, multi-home, screened subnet. Where they were covered in this chapter, but I'm not going to talk about uh, due to the time constraint. There are five types of firewall. Packet filtering, stateful fire, firewall, proxy firewall, dynamic filtering, and kernel proxy. Packet firewalls examine header information of data packets most often based on combination of IP and source and destination address, direction inbound or outbound, uh, TCP or UDP source and destination port request. Stateful firewall is like a nosy neighbor who gets into people's business and conversations. It keeps track of everything. Uh, like packet filtering, however, the router keeps track of a connection. It knows which conversation are active, who is involved, etc. It is more complex and can launch a DOS against it by trying to fill up all the entries in the state table. It will use up memory. If rebooted, it can disrupt conversation that had been occurring. Proxy firewall stands between a trusted and untrusted network and make the connection each way on behalf of the source works as a middleman and only with the applications it understands. It also writes the address so the external host only see the proxy. However, however, proxy can be slow and a bottleneck, especially when it breaks the traditional client-server application model, which can cause issues on some applications. It can make troubleshooting a lot harder. 
there are two types of proxies uh, application level proxies specific to applications only um, like X HTTP or SMTP these can strongly protect and be aware of specific vulnerabilities and protocol violation or dangerous data but only work with the protocols that they specifically understand the second one is uh, circuit level proxies um, they, they work at lower level at the session level to generally be a middleman between two computers generally works at w with all network protocols as it doesn't understand the actual application involved uh, it cannot protect against violations in the protocol or bad data being passed around main purpose is to hide internal network and stop direct communication between external machines and internal machines S example uh, SOX or, or NAT or PNAT the next type is dynamic packet filtering it's like stateful firewall but more advanced it can actually rewrite rules dynamically like some protocols such as FTP have complex communication that require multiple ports and protocols for a specific application packets and stateful filter cannot handle this easily so however dynamic packet filter can as they can create rules on the fly as needed last but not least the kernel proxy firewall which is the fifth generation firewalls it create dynamic customized network stacks when a packet needs to be evaluated and it has better performance the fact that the package is processed at the kernel level proxy servers are not proxy based firewalls they act as an intermediary between the client that wants access to certain services and the servers that provide those services there are different type of proxy servers forwarding proxies are usually working as a messenger between a private network and the public network for example internet to handle outbound requests reverse proxies are generally used to process requests from an from the internet through a firewall to isolated or private networks open proxies are type of forward proxies they are available and accessible by online users in the form of a web browser or website web proxies however are also known as anonymous proxies they hide the original IP address and prevent the remote domain server from obtaining the identity of the end user the last topic is honeypots honeypot systems are decoy servers or systems set up to gather information regarding an attacker to your system it is uh, important to remember that honeypots do not replace other traditional internet security systems they are an additional level or system a honey net contains one or more honeypots in addition to the honeypots a honey net usually has real applications so that it seems like a network and uh, uh, like a real normal r network and worthwhile target on a smaller scale companies prefer to implement trap it it seems easy to target it is an internet attached server that acts as a decoy luring in potential hackers and responding in a way that causes their machine to get stuck sometimes for a very long time